This video is brought to you by Portrait Mode. Street photography is hard. It takes time, dedication, patience, skill and also more than just a little bit of luck, especially with the medium of film. But this is rarely what we get to see. We see the end results, the great pictures or 5 minute POV videos full of incredible shots and that might lead to us doubting ourselves and our own street photography since we don't have the same hit rate or pace. But to be honest, I think the view on street photography is kinda skewed through social media. And this is why I would like to invite you to join me on a journey onto the street and at the same time into my head to give you a realistic insight how a session on the street looks like for me. The good, the bad and the ugly. As I go, I will include a number of tips that helped me improve my street photography and hopefully can also help you to improve yours. Das war nix. Das war nix. Das habe ich schon gefühlt. Tip number one, use a camera that you know inside out. Because this is your tool that you're using on the street and it doesn't matter which tool it is. Some people like to use rangefinder cameras, some people like to use SLRs or even TLRs or something like a point and shoot camera. It doesn't really matter, but it's really important that you can operate this camera almost blindfolded. For me, this camera is the Leica M6, but honestly, if you don't have like a fancy expensive rangefinder camera, doesn't really matter, just make sure that you know how to operate it so you don't have to think about it and fiddle around when you're out there and it really counts to get the shot. The next tip is to shoot fast film, no matter what. Today for example it's really sunny, which might be tempting to shoot a slow film, something like an ISO 100 film, but I tell you, shoot something like a 400 film, no matter how sunny it is. Because that way you can adjust your aperture uh, to close it down to something like f11 or even f16, and also speed up your shutter speed to 1 500 or even 1 1000th of a second, because this will allow you to shoot with zone focusing, which is something I will explain later in this video. But this basically gives you the most flexibility to shoot on a sunny day, even when you step into the shadows. So when I step into the shadow, I adjust my aperture mostly. I leave my shutter speed as is, go to something like f5.6. Uh, and then when I step into the sun again, I go back to f11 or f16. Sometimes there's a lot going on, but still nothing that you kind of feel drawn to. And I think this is the difficult part, when there's so much chaos and so many people spread out that you don't really know where to go. Um, but I think we will just go another round, maybe go this way again. That was the playing dump trick. Fiddle around with your camera, look at something in the background, don't look the people in the eye, just look at this, but shoot at them. Seriously, one thing I cannot stress enough is to always have your camera in your hand. Like I think a lot of people are doing that wrong to keep the camera in their bag or carry it like this and then you see a shot and then you kind of have to get out here and take the shot. Nope, don't do it. Keep it in your hand, relatively close to your face as well. Don't keep it here all the time, keep it here so you can operate it just faster. Because a camera that's not close to you, it's not no good. No good. No, no good. Vamos 
So what I do is that I zone focus and there's many videos on there, so I won't explain it in detail. But what this basically means is that when you uh, close down your aperture, you get a wider field of sharpness, so to speak. So for example, currently when I go down with my aperture to f11 and I set it to three meters, everything from 1.5 meters to infinity will be in focus. So I don't really have to focus at all, but I know that everything in this distance will be in focus. So what I do is that I kind of set two zones, one zone that is clo like close to me, and I remember this position of the focusing tab, and one zone that is far from me, and I remember this position of the focusing tab. So when I see a subject coming my way, I just have to kind of measure the distance where the subject is, and I know whether I have to shoot it in the close zone or the far zone, and I don't really have to focus and look through the viewfinder, which is a good plus, and this is why we have to shoot fast film. Lass mal da lang gehen, aber bin ich irgendwie super selten. Müssen nur gucken, dass wir nicht überfahren werden. So this for example is a really interesting spot because you can see that the light is shaped like as the railings of the train station thing. So it creates like very interesting shadows on people's faces. So we'll see if we will catch something. It would be great to catch it like you're right in the middle of the eye of a person, but I think that's hard. We'll just camp here for a minute, see who will pass. I usually don't really camp a lot, I usually move a lot. But it's uh, sometimes good to chill for a moment, see what's happening, see how the vibe is, see how interesting people come along. And now, for example, when I have so much time, like now, I can just pre-focus. So I don't really have to focus anymore, but when something, someone passes, I can just shoot. But usually when I try to camp, this happens, I get too impatient, I just keep moving anyway. And one thing I also think that a lot of people underestimate is kind of the way you dress. I always try to dress like neutral when I'm shooting on the street, wearing just like plain basic things, because that way I'm not super flashy, also with a camera in my hand and people look at me, but I try to be like invisible and I just feel like choosing your clothes accordingly also helps. Um, but of course you can also be flashy if you want people to notice you and attract attention and maybe trigger some behavior in them. But for me, it just feels more natural to be like sneaky and invisible and wear like black or just uh, simple clothes. Most of the time, actually, I bring the camera to my eyes, but sometimes it's just easier to, to frame it uh, from the hip. And when you use zone focusing and you can feel the position of the focus, you don't really have to look anyway. But um, I just like composing and I feel like my composing is not as sloppy when I bring the camera to my eye. Jetzt mit den Pokémon-Karten, ey, Hammer. And one thing, if you see chaos, it's not enough to stand outside of the chaos, but you have to go in. Ich 
And one thing we oftentimes don't do is when we go straight forward, we kind of ignore what's happening behind us. So what I really like to do is go for a bit and then turn around and see what's happening behind me because usually these are also the people that go in my direction. So it makes sense to turn around to get people's faces and not people's backs. Und diese Zacken hier sehen auch ganz cool aus. Sneaky. I don't really know why a lot of people say you shouldn't go out like in the middle of the day when the light is too harsh. Everybody likes to go out at golden hour, but honestly, I think harsh light like this situation is kind of perfect. It's just like more dynamic. You have a lot of lights, a lot of people who are covering their, their faces from the light. So I think it's dynamic and really interesting. And I actually like to go out in a harsh daylight situation. Another tip I constantly use to improve my street photography is to get inspired and learn from other people's work. And a good platform to do so is Portrait Mode, who is also the sponsor of this video. Unlike the name might suggest, Portrait Mode is a website for street photographers, where you can upload your photos to showcase your work, build your portfolio and also connect to other street photographers from all over the world. One big advantage Portrait Mode has over other social media platforms is that it was specifically designed for street photographers, so that it's possible to tag the equipment but also settings used for a photo. That way I can analyze and study other people's work and extract what elements or compositions I enjoy that I might try to implement on my next street session myself. The website is completely free to use and still rather young, which means that new features are constantly added. If that is something you are interested in, check out the link in the description box down below. Sometimes you feel it and sometimes you don't. I was just a tiny second too slow because I wanted to have her gesture kind of peeking out behind his body and I was too slow and the hand was already gone so I just got like a shot from the back but it happens yeah failing that's okay too and now I know what I want to do better the next time move a bit faster maybe go the other direction these are the situations nobody really talks about the missed shots the missed opportunities the being too slow being you know not fast enough uh, but that's part of the game and this happens at least to me but maybe i'm just a bad photographer but i kind of assume it happens to everybody this happens all the time to me and i'm just really really happy if on a roll of film 36 images i get one maybe two good images then it was all worth it oh really sunny f11 <laughs> Why? People, why? I don't get it. Like seriously, clean up your mess. <laughs> Flying pig pigeons and like people running behind the pigeons are always something that is good to shoot. But here, not enough Berlin pigeons around, I guess. But actually, this is something I wanted to, to talk about because um, there's like different types of street photographers. Some people who are like uh, hunters or fishers. So hunters are the people who are like moving all the time and fishers are the people that are like camping at a spot and trying to get the shot. And I would consider myself more of a hunter because I like to be on the move. And I think my, my thought process behind this is uh, kind of leaning into a book I've read some time ago called, is it called Pigeons in the Grass? 
Grass. Yeah, pigeons in the grass, exactly. Where you get uh, to learn about a story of different characters in one city, uh, which are mainly not aware of each other, but everybody's like going their way. And then sometimes we have like crossing points, like knots where the people meet. And only we as readers kind of get to, to, to see the full point or the whole story. And I kind of feel like I'm in this situation as well. I just have to move all the time. And maybe at some point I will have like a knot point, a crossing point with some person I want to shoot. So for me, it just feels more natural to, to move all the time, to be able to get more of these kind of happy situations, happy accidents, where I stumble upon the person I want to shoot. Sounded more philosophic and intellectual in my head than it really is, but I, just how it feels to me. I know that this is such a cliche thing to say, but honestly, for me, all the shots I have regretted were the ones that I didn't take. And I think I never regretted the shots that I took, even though they might suck. <laughs> because every time I press the trigger, I learn something, and in the end, I know what I would do different. But sometimes I still think about the situations where I was too afraid, too scared to take a shot. So I just try to kind of bring those situations down and just shoot more than I really need to simply not regret any situation that I have been missing. Yeah, that was it. So that was everything for today. This was one roll of hopefully realistic commented street photography. We'll see in the edit how it turns out. But I will try to show you as many images as I can from this uh, roll of 36 exposures. And I'm sure that there will be like very bad images, blurry images, things that are unusable. But I just hope that somewhere hidden in this roll there will also be like my one or two images that I really like. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think about this style of video as well. Let me know about your approach of street photography because I would be really interested to learn about this. And that said, I would say, see you in the next one. Oh,